Hi, you're watching the Healthy Living Resources Telecast. Today we'll be discussing how to help our kids transition from summer into that structured back to school schedule. So stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the Healthy Living Resources Telecast. I'm Ray Baker, your Healthy Relationships Program Specialist with OSU Extension. Our topic today will be focusing on healthy routines parents can use to help their kids transition back to school. And to share some helpful approaches on this topic, we have with us today Lisa Manning, who is one of our OSU Extension educators. Lisa also leads our statewide parenting team and is one of our lead experts in the topic of parenting education. So welcome, Lisa. Can you please take a moment to introduce yourselves to our viewers and share a little bit about your role and what it is you do with OSU Extension? Thank you, Ray. Um, as Ray stated, I am a 4-H and a family consumer science educator at the OSU Extension office in Lake County. Um, I also am in the state team leader and have a, a, a very vast background in parenting. I'm a licensed independent social worker through the state of Ohio, and I've been at Extension for a little over 15 years, actually going on 16 years now. And prior to coming to Extension, I had a whole career in mental health. So I um, started out my career working for Children's Services um, when I was working on my master's degree uh, from Case Western Reserve University. And then from there, I worked in residential treatment. Um, and I worked with teenage moms who had emotional and behavioral problems and working with them through their issues as well as assisting them in the role of parenting. Um, from there, I ran the Help Me Grow program in our county here in Lake County um, for several years, um, which, you know, helped with help parents both with getting their children where they needed to be developmentally, but also assisting them with those parenting skills. Um, and then I have also done private practice, um, working with children, youth and families, as well as I've worked for um, mental health agencies that have been in the uh, public sector as well. Um, and like I said, I've been an extension for 15 years. I've done a lot of work in my FCS career, working with our jobs and family services, working with families who have a lot of stressors, working through with parents who go through divorce. I work a lot with our court systems. Um, so I've really kind of worked a lot in the, in the different settings, working with um, families, youth and uh, children, as well as working in the parenting. thing I wanted to say, uh, Ray, before we went any further, I also am an expert because I'm a mom. So oh. I, have, uh, I have three boys of my own um, who are... Uh, 15, almost 18 and 20. And I've been teaching parenting um, prior to having children. And what I tell people all the time is, while well, I'm an expert in parenting, if you see me in public, my children don't always listen to me. Um, I'm just like any other parent who struggles sometimes with, with you know, kids who have their own mindset and things that they want to do or their own struggles. Um, so I have my personal experience as well as my professional experience. <laughs> all right. So let's just get right to it. Okay. So Routines, establishing these routines um, for our kids. Why is that so important as we head back to school? Well, routines are important for children of all ages. When we were, when we were looking at our little kiddos who are, you know, in elementary school um, or maybe even preschool or kindergarten, routines are really important because it helps them to feel safe. They know what to they know what to predict. Um, you know, if your child doesn't have a regular routine and you're telling them to do this and then do that. Um, what you end up having with a younger child is a child who's, you know, stressed out or maybe overwhelmed because they're not, they don't have a regular routine, a regular predictable schedule. So you start to see them act out because they don't feel secure about their environment. I always kind of give the analogy, if you started a new job and you showed up there in the morning and somebody came in 30 minutes later and said you were missed the meeting, meeting, morning meeting and got angry with you. Um, and then a few hours later came back and told you were supposed to take lunch an hour ago. You wouldn't feel very safe about your job. And children are the same way. They need to have um, a good, predictable environment. And that comes from routine, routines. When you're looking at your older children, the, the importance of routines is just helping them to be prepared. You know, when as they get older, they have more responsibilities. They're juggling jobs. They may be juggling extracurricular activities. We know they have a social life. So they have a lot of things going on. So if they have a routine where they're getting things ready, whether they're at night, you know, if they're a night person or in the morning, um, kind of a regular schedule of doing things, they're going to be prepared for school. They're going to feel better about their day um, and, and, and their uh, overall functioning in school or whatever else it is that they're doing. That was a really good, important point that you added on there because our viewers, we all have different you know, children at different stages and ages. 
Um, so as you go through today and share this helpful information, um, it'll be great to hear how, you know, we uh, approach a younger kindergarten, you know, age student versus, um, you know, a student in high school and helping them get back into routines. So just some other reasons why um, routines are so important is that, you know, first of all, transitions go more smoothly. So when you're transitioning from getting up in the morning to getting out the door, or you're transitioning from the evening activities into bedtime, if you have a regular predictable routine, that transition goes, goes seamless because the child knows what to expect. Again, whether you have a young child that you're, you know, you're transitioning in the evening to bedtime and you read stories, or you have an older child that you're helping them get their their book bag together and their homework stuff, um, whatever that transition is that you regularly do, they, they go more smoothly. Um, obviously, it minimizes frustrations in the home. So you're not running around in the morning trying to find their shoes that they kicked off when they came um, home the day before and it's underneath the table and you're trying to find it. If you have everything together, it minimizes frustrations in the morning when you're going through those transitions. Um, you know, responses become Come automatic. You know, if you are if you have good routines, when you say it's time to get up, they they start going right through that regular routine. I always tell a funny story about my oldest son. I'm sure he would love that I'm telling him stories. Um, he he's 20 now, but when he was in kindergarten, we had really good routines in the morning. I'm I'm a runner, so I would get up in the morning and run um, before everybody in my household, including my husband, got up. Um, and so as soon as I came in the door, I would get them up. They'd come downstairs. They'd get dressed. Um, you know, start eating their breakfast and things like that. The first day of school, first grade, you know, he's all excited about school and I'm out for my run and he must have gotten up early because of the excitement and went downstairs and, you know, got dressed, came downstairs, got his book bag, grabbed the cereal out of the cabinet and stood by the window to wait for the bus. Only as I was coming back from my run, it was a middle school bus and the middle school bus was coming around the cul-de-sac. And um, there goes my first grader running out thinking it's the bus. Um, and obviously they knew it wasn't, um, he, he wasn't supposed to be on the bus and he, he, he didn't get on it. Um, but we, but it's just an example of how he, the first day of school, got up and had that regular um, automatic response to getting up for school. So we didn't miss buses as a result of that. Um, <laughs> right. So, so that um, was a teachable moment, Lisa? <laughs> it was a teachable moment, yes. Um, yeah. So my, my, my husband, my husband was up with him in the, in the morning as well. So, but he came running out as I was coming in. So, um, cause he thought it was his bus. So it isn't like he got on the bus, um, but it was a kind of a cute thing. So he was very excited about school and he, and he you know, again, those responses become automatic. So the other thing about routines is that research suggests that that children who have good routines do better at home and do better at school for all the reasons that I talked about. Is they're more confident, they have a good um, understanding of what their day is going to look like, and they're prepared for their day. Um, so that's why they do better in school and at home. Um, the other thing about having good routines is it just teaches kids good organizational skills. You know, good routines is a life skill that we all need to have um, to be successful. And so starting young with children and, and teaching them good routines is just setting them up for success. Um, the other thing is it just assists parents in being organized. So like I stated, I had three children. They were all a few years apart. And if I had to get up every morning and pull each child out of bed and get them dressed and pack their backpacks and make sure their lunches are ready and walk them to the bus stop, I myself would never get out the door and I would have a challenge of getting them all out the door. So teaching them good routines, teaching them some independent skills about how they have to prepare for the day, again, just helps the parent to be organized and getting everybody to start their day successfully. And again, even bedtime routines are the same way. You know, you don't want your bedtime routines to last until midnight. So if every child knows what to do, those responses are automatic. It, it just sets you off on a, on a good um, path, especially as you're starting the school year. Okay, so Lisa, you're talking to the points of the research that goes behind this, um, all the different things that we can do to establish routines. So the question is, how do we actually do it? <laughs> How do we develop these good routines um, for ourselves and our kids? Well, the first thing, if you have young kiddos, you know, starting early, you know, starting when they're, you know, um, toddlers or preschoolers and making it fun, you know, so whether you're singing songs as you move from transition to transition, or if it's cleanup time, you know, having a little competition, you know, like who could pick up the most toys, you know, at bedtime, having fun routines where you read stories, um, you know, so starting at a young age is, is an important thing. Now, if you if you haven't had good routines as um, as your children were younger and you're trying to get on board with that now, one way to do that is have family meetings. You know, um, our family does family meetings around all the season changes when when our routines are going to change. So having conversations about 
gee, what struggles did we have last school year? You know, did we have problems with the bathroom? Who was in the bathroom? Who was using the bathroom? Or, um, you know, who was in the kitchen preparing their meals? Um, did we miss the bus a few times? So having discussions about what maybe your, your struggles were and then coming up with the plan to be successful. So from here on out, we're going to at, bed at bedtime is get everything ready for the night before. Um, this is who's going to be in the bathroom first because they have to get up earlier. They have to be out by this time so the next person can get into the bathroom. So I like that. You're going over like what worked and what didn't work and then making plans for the next season or the next year. Right. And then um, and good. then everybody can can have a, uh, um, an opportunity to talk about what they need. This is what I need in the morning. This is what mm -hmm. I don't need in the morning. Um, and again, family meetings are just another good way for kids to have a voice um, and to be able to problem solve, which is another life skill. Um, you know, um, the important routines are really around mealtime. Uh, cleanup time, homework, bedtime, and getting up in the morning. Those are kind of the most important routines. Um, so those are things to kind of look at when you're when you're setting up routines. Did you ever do um, charts or schedules or things that your kids would utilize to put stickers or something to help guide the whole family? Or well, so yes, most definitely you can use charts um, for younger children. I mean, those those aren't really so effective with older children, mm -hmm. but having um, charts. So if your child doesn't know how to read, having um, like a symbol. So we used to have a picture of a bed, it's what indicated bedtime, you know, morning time with the sun. So you can have symbols that indicate things. Um, and then if they do well with that, you can reward them. You know, you know, again, we're looking at, you know, a summer, you know, where maybe you haven't had such good routines where you've been out in the evenings catching fireflies or going for walks. And now you've got to pull those routines um, back in to prepare for school because you're going to be getting up earlier in the morning. So, you know, having some reward systems that will set them up for success as well. But the other thing that's important is if school doesn't start for a week or two or three, starting um, to, to back up the bedtime now. So if you've been staying up to 930 and let's say you have to go to bed at 830 for a couple days, start bringing them in at 915 for bed, you know, and then nine o'clock. So it isn't like you the first day of school, you say, OK, we're going to bed now an hour earlier and they are laying in bed and they can't fall asleep. Um, and then starting to wake them up a little bit earlier in the morning um, and making sure their days are kind of filled with activity. So you're kind of getting back into that that routine um, to prepare them for school. OK, so I know you've shared with me, we, we, we work very closely together. You have shared a really good analogy to help us, we parents, visualize starting out young with that foundation. Would you like to talk more about that? Yeah. So. Um, Sylvia Rim, who was um, a parenting expert in my area of town, um, but she's she's nationally known, she coined the phrase parenting like a V. So when you parent like a V, you have lots of structure when your children are, you know, young, kindergarten, preschool, early elementary school, um, you have tight routines, you have a lot of rules, um, and, 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 and like I said, lots of structure. And then as they become into late elementary school or early middle school, you kind of loosen up. And the hope is that they internalize what you done throughout their younger years with good routines, with good rules, with consistency, and you're allowing them to have some freedom to make some choices because they're now able to pull from that. So um, many parents, when their kids are younger um, and they don't want to go to bed or they don't want to clean up the to their toys, the parents will say, well, you know, they can, they can sleep in bed with me or they can stay up and watch TV until they fall asleep or they don't want to clean up their toys, so they just clean it up for them. Um, but, but what they start to recognize is as their children get older, the things that they want aren't as easy as just letting them fall asleep with the TV on or giving them a cookie because, so they quit crying. And then they, they parent like an A, and this is uh, Lisa Manning and not <laughs> Sylvia Rim. And then they try to enforce structure and rules on their children that they maybe are not familiar with or aren't used to having. And um, Stacey, uh, Ray, what do you think happens when that um, occurs? Well, I would think that um, it would create resistance. It'd be very difficult for a child who did not have a lot of structure in, uh, in the beginning, early years, and when they all of a sudden have some, you know, tightened up structure in the later years, I could see more resistance occurring and, um, you know, a child not understanding why all of a sudden they have all of this structure when they didn't have it before. Right. They rebel. That's, that's basically yeah. what you're describing. They rebel. It would yeah. be like, right, if you and I were playing a game, and all of a sudden I found out I was losing and I tried to change the rules. I don't know that you would be so willing to change the rules so I could win. And kids are the same way. 
Um, it doesn't mean though that if you haven't had good routines or good structure in your home that you can't you can't start. Um, you can always start. It's just easier if you start when they're younger. Um, but again, if you have older children, having these family meetings, discussing the struggles that you've had in the in the past having discussions with them about how you want them to be successful. And sometimes those are difficult um, discussions because like like we stated, kids rebel and they don't want to do something differently. But if it's coming from a place of love, you know, where you you want your children to be successful, you don't want them to have school problems, um, th th they're more inclined to listen to what you have to say. And you as a parent have to put that structure in place. That's your role as the parent. Yeah, and with that, Where's that, when you put that structure in place early on, how does that affect a child's choices um, and, and their ability to make those choices? Well, when you when you give your children the tools, you know, to, to be organized and how to do that um, and, and that structure, you know, th those routines we've talked about, getting prepared the night before or having a good schedule in the morning or when we do our homework or where we do our homework and you do that when they're young, that they develop that skill set and that value that homework is, in, is important, going to bed and getting a good night's rest is important, being mm -hmm. prepared in the morning is, is important. So you're, you're, you're teaching them that character and that you're modeling that. You know, the other thing that's really important is that you model it as a parent. If you're laying in bed and yelling for your child to get up, um, you're not really setting a good example. So, you know, those are the, the all, of, all of that teaching young um, creates that that character, what's important and how to do it. Um, and again, like I stated, though, if, if that isn't something you've done when they were younger, there is still time to do that now um, with a child who maybe is in late elementary school or even middle school or high school, having the conversation with them that these are life skills. You know, you're preparing them for adulthood. You want them to be responsible and accountable. And one way to do that is help them to have a good routine so they're prepared for their school day or their work day. You know, if they go from school to work or maybe, you know, some of our, our older kids may start with a work schedule in the morning and then go to school if they're in um, that type of program. And all of that is really important for preparing them for adulthood. And you as a parent are trying to assist them in being successful. And that's all about having a conversation. I think those are really good points that, and, and it's very important um, for our viewers out there to hear that message that you just said, I think I'm going to put a, uh, a highlight on that, that it's never, it's never too late. Um, you can still apply these techniques and skills and tools um, for establishing healthy routines um, with, um, with any age that our child, you know, whether it be a teenager or middle schooler. Um, and I also think it's a, a, a good point that you shared about modeling and how strong just what we do, they're watching us, how that affects um, their routines and their choices. And now, Elisa, you've talked about values and I, you were just touching on character development. Um, could you go into some more depth on uh, how our values affect our kids' ability to uh, choose their routines or make choices or um, deal with peer pressure? Values, I sometimes feel, is, is like the under-talked thing in parenting. Um, you know, people assume that if you have good values or good morals, your children will, will um, naturally have them. But values are something you have to be constantly talking to your children about. They may not be so aware of what you're modeling for them without a good discussion. And you start talking about your values to your children, you know, in, in preschool and, and um, kindergarten, in early elementary school. You know, if you have values about education, you you talk to them about the importance of, you know, being prepared and doing your homework. You know, when your children are young, you set up a time, you may help them to study. You may have study groups with with, the, with their friends if they're struggling with something. Um, you know, you may have values about being independent or self-reliant. You may have values about um, not using drugs or alcohol. And those are all discussions that you have with your children when those opportunities present themselves. Perhaps you're watching something on TV and, and you see something. Um, you know, a, a lot of times um, we, you know, I think of back when my kids were younger and there was um, all the Katrina flooding and all of that in New Orleans. And you were seeing youth who um, people who were looting. Um, you know, big screen TVs and things like that. Um, but then there were also people who were struggling for food and helping your child to understand the difference. You know, you're seeing something on TV and, you know, sometimes you're worried what your child has observed, but those are um, opportunities to teach. This is what was wrong about this. And this is what somebody was doing to protect and survive, you know, within a, within a, a crisis. Um, so any anytime your child comes home from school and something has happened, maybe they've observed something with a, a peer 
or somebody who's been picked on or or that they're they've had somebody hurt their feelings having a discussion about how that made them feel um, and how they won't do that to somebody else every moment is a teaching moment when i drive when i drive my kids in the car even to this day as as teenagers which i don't have as many opportunities my radio is turned off and we're talking about you know if i'm picking them up from baseball and maybe something a coach said or maybe something a peer did who was inappropriate with um a, a coach or maybe an umpire those are all opportunities to teach what yeah. your values are respectability um and 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 helps when the child starts to develop um, situations where they're in peer pressure situations, mm -hmm. um, you can go back to what your values are. You know, if they're going to a party where there's going to be alcohol and they're and they're talking to you about it, you go back to, well, these are what our values are. So is this a decision you should be making? Um, or maybe in those situations, they pull from their own character that you've been working with them for, you know, since they were young and they make the right decision. We've talk, talked about all these great routines that we can, as parents, um, cultivate and, and, and discuss and work with our, our children to set these routines for their everyday life as well as heading back to school. But how do we actually enforce these routines? Um, what are, um, like what expectations versus rules and you know, how, how do we get a guideline put in, put into place for our kids so that they will um, follow through on these routines? Well, like I stated before, Ray, you know, first you want to kind of have some kind of discussion, whether you have a formal family meeting or it's just something you you talk about at the dinner table with, with you know, school coming up. Now we're going to have to kind of switch our routines mm -hmm. and have that discussion. Um, then, you know, you have to have a clear expectation. You know, the expectation is that we're going to be on time every morning or at the bus stop every morning. You know, you're going to have um, rules around what time we go to bed. You know, our bedtime is this time. Um, so you're going to set that up with your children. So, you know, a rule, you know, when we're setting up right rules, we need to prioritize them. So what I tell parents is you probably want to have about nine to 11 rules. Um, and your rules are things that, you know, you're going to in enforce what I call um, zero tolerance. Your, your zero tolerance rules are the rules that hands down, if the rule is broken, there's going to be some type of consequence. And now when we think about consequence, everybody thinks of something punitive, but sometimes it's just a verbal, a verbal reminder. So you say to your child, it's time for bed and they're running around and you say, you know, the expectation is you get two books and I'm going to read two books before you go to bed, but they're running around and won't settle down. So, well, now we only have time for one. So that's the consequence. It isn't necessarily punitive, but it's saying to your child, the expectation is we're settling down. You're not settling down now. So guess what? We have one less book to read um, that gets their attention, or maybe we have no books to read. Um, so it's, you know, that's the expectation. And then, you know, setting up the rules, like I stated before, you want to have clear rules. You know, you're going to have rules around bedtime. You're going to have rules around when you do your homework, um, helping determine what is the best time for your child to do homework, you know, which is what I call the, ne the negotiable part of the rules. So I may be a parent that wants my children to do their homework as soon as they walk in the, in the door from school. And my child may say to me, you know what, when I get home from school, I'm tired and I want to have a snack. So you say to your child, what's a good time for you to, to get your homework done? Can you have it done before dinner? Or maybe you it's an hour before bedtime. So again, it's that parenting like a V, whereas they're getting older, they're trying to figure out what works for them. Um, the goal is that they do their homework. It isn't that they do their homework when we want them to do it, or even if you have chores, it isn't that they do the chore when we want them to do it. It's that the chore gets done every day. So helping the child to 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 kind of think about what's a good time of day for me to do it with your with our older children. You know, maybe when they were younger, they did do their homework right before dinner. Now yeah. they have extracurricular activities. So now they're doing their homework a little bit later. So having that discussion with them and then setting up some clear rules of when those things are done. And if your child is not getting their homework done, now you come in with, with, with um, some type of consequence. Or maybe they're coming in. Now they have to come in and do their homework earlier when they get home from school. Um, so it's it's all about the, giving them them the choices they're they have they have control on what what and how on how well they do um and if they don't make good choices then you have to come in and then re-guide them does that make sense yeah that does yes and i'm glad you threw in there with teenagers because i know you and i both have teenagers so it's a completely different approach with trying to uh reinforce routines or um have those expectations met and prior prioritize those routines um and if we're doing the foundation work and putting all that extra work in and during those younger years um that intrinsic that independent in, in independence um motivation coming from within hopefully will be there when we're not there to hold their hands for every choice and and guide them that they can do that on their own um so um 
that's been very helpful to uh, send reminders to me because even though I have this background in parenting and I, uh, probably a lot of our viewers are um, have been parents for a while um, it's always good to hear reminders right and just have right. the information reinforced right and like I said if you started if you've started earlier had those good routines as your children become teenagers you may not really be having to work with them about a, a homework time or a bedtime the hope is that they have learned how to time manage um, how much time they need to do homework, what time they need to go to bed to have a good night's sleep, to get up on time in the morning, you know, that they have, they're pulling, they're pulling from um, in, internally. Um, and they have that own self-discipline because you were, you have provided that for them when they're younger. And then again, if you haven't done that, then that's where you have those family meetings and start putting that in place. Right. Now, you have shared many teachable moments with me over the years, <laughs> like different yeah. things that have happened with your kids and different situations. Would you like to share any of those examples that might help put this in context, some of this information? What I will say is that um, if, if you've had good values with your kids, um, and you're, especially as, as we're starting school, and um, not only are we talking about routines, but what what also comes into play is that dreaded that dreaded peer pressure, you know, where kids are wanting to do things and that that emotional piece of trying to fit in, um, and and you as the parent trying to kind of negotiate, gee, I don't want them to be ostracized, but I also want to have them be in good situations. Um, and I and I think back, you know, with my children, I was always talking to them about values. Mm -hmm. And when my one son was probably in second or third grade, I remember taking him to a birthday party that I thought I was just going to be dropping him off mm -hmm. and going to run some errands. And when I walked in, the mother was drinking wine, which I, you know, was not necessarily comfortable with. And she was offering me wine and she was sending the kids into another room with an entertainer. And I thought to myself, this is probably not a good situation. So I went in with my son. And then when we got in the car, when the party was over, I talked to him about how their values were different and explained why. And that um, that while, you know, his friend was a nice person and and, um, and so was his mother, that that the things that I was not comfortable with. And we used that as an opportunity to talk about drinking. And then as he became older and he was in those those situations, he was able to pull himself out of it. Um, yeah. So. And anytime something happens, you know, where you witness something, having that discussion with your children about what my values are um, versus what somebody else's values. And it doesn't necessarily mean my values are better or worse. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, I, I have to identify what's important for me and my family. Um, and then I have to keep teaching that when I when we see those situations um, come up with with our children. Thank you, Lisa, for the helpful strategies that you've shared today. Uh, my two big takeaways are that Healthy routines help our kids do better in school and at home, which carry through um, a child's entire life. And number two would be probably to recognize that those teachable moments, um, recognize those and use those opportunities to clarify our values, which can ultimately help our kids with how they respond to peer pressure, which we all know that they face that on, on the daily. <laughs> um, but thank you again, Lisa, for all this helpful information as our um, youth are heading back to school right now. And if you viewers out there have any questions for Lisa, her contact information is listed in the credits. And please feel free to contact your local county extension office to get connected with all the great resources that we have to offer. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.